Hey coaches, it's Coach Lasker. I'm back again with uh, another installment of the Middle School Air Raid webinar series. Um, today we are going to move on to our three run plays. I'm excited to do so. Um, if you haven't already, please do connect with us on all of our channels. Um, YouTube especially would love to get that subscriber count up. So please uh, share with the, another youth coach that has any desire at all to run the uh, the air raid or or just wants to get more information about the spread offense, connect with us and c converse on, on Facebook, Twitter. But we really want to point at this coaches round table and get as many coaches from all different disciplines in there, run game dominant coaches, defensive dominant. Let's just get better um, as a youth coaching um, group. Uh, here we are. We are getting toward the latter half of our series with Three run plays being where we are currently are right now. Get some light in here. Um, so just a real quick recap. We've picked our three quick game plays. We've picked our drop back game plays. We've picked our screen game plays. And now we are on to run game, which is a favorite of mine. I love running the ball. Um, we are very proud of our team and the way that we coach running the game. Even though we're a pass first offense does not mean we don't take pride in it. Uh, I was a running back, wing T, way back in the day. So, you know, we coach the O-linemen um, to be that, have that same edge as we always have. Uh, they kind of set the tone every day of practice and every, in every game. So we are very, very um, purposeful with the way that we coach our O-line. Um, so I've chosen GT counter is one of my favorite plays of all time, pass run or, or whatever. Uh, we ran it really well last year. That is my first choice always as a run play. I love the gap scheme. I love the way it creates angles and, and creates um, mishaps on the, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, my favorite air raid team is Oklahoma and they run it so many ways with so many players and so many looks. That's one of the things I've challenged myself with this year is running GT counter with out of more looks and we'll kind of get into that in a second here with more, more people. Um, power, we run a, a power play that I'll show you here. Um, it hits a little quicker than the counter and it gets downhill. And then we have a draw play that we didn't do very much last year, but I'm going to show you, uh, I got it from the air raid groups. Um, it's an easy way to call a quick draw play. Um, and just using the norm, the normal numbering system that we all grew up using, uh, but a, a, a quarterback can check into a draw pretty quickly if they see the right front. Okay. All right, cool. So let's get into it. So first thing I'd like to go over is GT counter. Okay. So, um, we talked a little bit about it yesterday that we are going to run at the same time. Um, we're going to run um, our quick screens out here. We're going to combine it with, with, with GT counter, but for the purposes of today, let's talk about how GT counter works. So here it is 26 GT counter, just like we usually would call it um, in any other offense. Okay. So, we're going to put this guy here because typically we do see a five man front uh, in youth football. If it goes to four, then it's even easier. Uh, but just so you can see worst case scenario, how we do this uh, pretty much the same as people have always done it. Uh, the front side. So we're going 26, two, four, six hole, just like always one, three, five hole. Um, not trying to reinvent the wheel here. Um, so the center blocks back all the way back to the defensive tackle backside. The, the front side guard blocks back on the nose tackle and the front side tackle blocks down uh, on the defensive tackle. Okay. Which means we're inviting this DN to come upfield. Hopefully he will. And they usually do. So this backside guard opens up and full speed down the line and kicks out that D end, uh, which means this backside tackle will open and then wrap around and up the alley. Uh, where, the, where the running back will be taking a hard counter jab step and then coming back around, getting in his hip and, and following him up the hole, okay? Um, we do teach the quarterbacks to be looking at this deep backside D end, okay? 
you know, in youth football, there's not that many DNs that will like chase by a rule. They're not that advanced yet. But we do want the quarterback, while he's handing it off, to get used to looking at that D end as that running back's taking the ball. Because at some point, if that D end does start crashing, it'll just be an easy pull. But we don't implement that until later in the season. Okay. Um, so again, if if for whatever reason they come out uh, on defense with three over here, then this tackle would just take it up to um, to that backside backer. Okay, easy enough. So that's 26 GT counter. Okay, so going the other way, um, it's the exact same thing. Front side, all back blocks. Backside guard kicks out. Backside tackle wraps. Um, we'll get into how we're going to call this at some other time. But basically, if it's three on two out here, the quarterback's going to just come out here and throw it. Just get it out there. If there's a third defender out here, we're just going to run counter. And then basically the way the quarterback's going to do that on both these plays, no matter what happens, the O-line and the running backs, they're all going to run GT counter. And it's the quarterback reading this over here that's going to tell either he's just going to get the ball and throw it out here or pre-snap he's going to look over to his running back, say, you, you, which means that the running back knows the quarterback is actually going to give him the ball in this scenario, looking at this backside DN that whole time, okay? And then they're going to go ahead and execute the GT counter, okay? Um, out of two backs, uh, you'll see on film last year, we tried to cross this other back in front just to cause more confusion. Uh, it didn't do enough. Um, it actually caused a little bit more confusion in our backfield than theirs. So we're going to go ahead and do it Oklahoma way this year where this F is going to clearly come outside and, and lead block, which might and should bring this linebacker to him because he's trying to match him. Um, and then everybody else is running the same. Uh, same thing in the other way. So it's GT counter with that kind of a lead. And then here's what I'm talking about. Another way that we're going to run it this year. Um, and I love last year I ran GT counter into the boundary. Um, I'm not doing that this year with this typical um, play because uh, we really want to put this defender, this third defender, whoever it is. Um, we really want to put the coaches in a bind, whether they're going to have a nose tackle or a linebacker and then make them pick their poison. So it really puts pressure on this third defender to do it to the field. Uh, one way that I'm going to get it back to the boundary, which I want to, because it works uh, a lot better actually to the boundary is still run it the same way, but instead of giving it to the running back, it's going to be a nice long fake, which is basically the counter step for the quarterback. And then he's going to run the counter himself. So everything's going to look exactly the same, except we're going to run counter back to the boundary. Um, so we're going to call this 16 GT instead of 26 running backs are two, 20, you know, 26, 36, twenties and thirties quarterback is 16 with the one. Um, so it, we're going to call this GT counter into the boundary. We'll call it something. I'm not really sure yet, but, um, basically 16, 16 GT counter. Okay. So again, everything looks the same to the defense, except we're running counter back into the boundary. And we're going to do it the other way as well. So all this action is still going on out here. Everything's flowing this way. All this is going on. The quarterback's going to ride them out and then go back into the boundary, which I'm excited about. Okay. So here's a few um, GT, GT counter clips for you. So here we go. Just chalk it up real quick. So this is, this is the center. So he's back. He's back, he's down, this guy is wrapping or kicking, and he is wrapping. And watch him turn inside. This tackle needs to get up the alley. If he gets that far, he needs to look inside for this block. And watch how perfectly executed this is. Boom, off to the races. Kick out, wrap up, inside, put him on the ground. And let your players go to work. We are we take a lot of pride in their running the game, running the ball, guys. Take a lot of pride in it. And even when these plays don't perfect, the blocks don't perfectly happen. Still, the way that these plays are set up and the way that it, 
the counter runs and gets everyone flowing one way and then trying to come back another way, you still get a lot of really great success. Um, okay, coming back this way, kick out. That rat block got, got held up in the middle, but again, there's just so much deception going on, guys. A lot of people are worried about, oh, how do you set up your counter? How do you set up the counter? You gotta run dive, dive, dive. And guys, if you execute and block this the way that it's supposed to be blocked, and you rep it uh, the way that you're supposed to rep, just like we rep all these passing plays over and over and over. Um, we're gonna do the same with running plays, okay? That's why the small playbook allows you to do that. And these running plays, as you guys know, they pop. They pop just like a passing play would. So um, you just have to rep it, just like everything else in the playbook. Um, it gets as much attention as the passing plays. Uh, so don't get that twisted because everybody needs to be able to run the ball, okay? So the next thing is power that I wanna talk about. Um, this is still a two-back formation, okay? Um, in the air raid, in the air raid, the quarterback being under center, this formation would be black. We're not gonna have him under the center unless we have to, so he's in the shotgun, but this, what we call gray, is a variation of black. That means he's in a pistol. Um, that's air raid terminology as well. And so our power fold, this is our power fold, okay? And this is, you know, goal line type of thing or short yardage or even coming out from, from the end zone, your own end zone. Um, but anyway, so here is our power fold and there's so much going on here. Let me just delete some of this stuff, okay? Um, so just so you can see the block. And again, we see a five-man front more than not. If you get a four-man front, more power to you, you'll be able to run it that much easier. But basically our power fold, 26 power fold, is this Y is coming all the way across and down blocking. It's again, great gap scheme blocking. This tackle is gonna open and do a fold block, which is basically just a, a kick out block on the D end. Uh, it doesn't happen as, as, as impactful as the far kick out from the backside tackle or guard, but you get a good little wallop on this guy and the goal is to kick him out. So then obviously your F can be coming through and getting up on the linebacker, okay? Um, there is one variation that I'm gonna show you is if, and it happens, if this guy is way down here, way down here, then these guys have a call and then this guy goes down. And now this guy comes out on the linebacker on the DN and then the fullback just, I'm sorry. The tight end goes up to the linebacker and the fullback kicks out on the D end, okay? And it's a nice little play as well. So power fold is when the tackle opens and folds. And then that's our default call. But if this guy's way down here, the adjustment will be, um, will be for these guys to kind of flip positions. And now the, the, the Y goes up on the linebacker and the T comes and gets the end, okay? So here's the same thing out of tan. So this formation under center with the fullback to the left is brown with him in pistol is tan so i'm only going to introduce you to these two because that's really all we're going to run but it's the same exact thing the other way so the tackle folds out there's a fold block on the d end the y is down on the defensive tackle and the f is up to the linebacker again i'll show you with film the adjustment okay so here is power Okay, so here's fold. This right tackle is gonna fold on this guy. He is gonna go down, and we're gonna get a nice little pop in there. Boom, boom, right up the alley, and through. Right here we go again, this tackle out. Tight end is up. And the running back is going to read this and burst through that hole. So if you look at the tackle, you know, not, all, not every time the defensive end will come upfield, but he has to be aggressive. 
And if the guy is sitting back, then go get him. Okay, that was one of the main coaching points. Go get him. Go, f- go find somebody here. He doesn't do a great job, but he walls him off enough to where the running back can get out and, and break one. Okay, here it goes again. So here's what I'm talking about. Here's the D end who's coming this way. But now this D tackle, for whatever reason, is way down here in a one technique. So it's a little too far for him to get. So he's they're gonna he's gonna say he might be saying it right now, you you. So he's gonna go down. He's gonna get up on the linebacker. And he should be getting the end here. No, nope, we switched it. So in this scenario, this is good, and that's why I love our O line coaches. They can make adjustments. So he is out on the D end. He's down, and the running back is through the hole. But there's no fold there. It's just traditional power, and we're off to the races again. But just like you guys have been running power forever, um, you know, it, it continues on. It's just a strong play, short yardage play um, that, uh, that every team needs, okay? All right, so for the last – Last running play, um, let's just go over the two draw plays. And so we only – I mean, we literally saw a four-man front out of 12 games last year twice. Um, so we really run off tackle and outside quite a bit. We don't typically run up the middle. Um, if we do get into a four-man front, you do want a, uh, a draw play. And so it's very much – like you would just assume, right? So you want the outside tackles to invite the DNs upfield. Everyone is taking their two-step vertical pass set, everybody. Um, we want to play this technique. Um, since the center is going to be closer to it, take his vertical pass set and then attack this D tackle, this, this, uh, you know, this inside technique to where this guard can take his vertical pass set and then wrap around and come up to get a linebacker. And so the quarterback step, you know, three-step drop, one-step drop, whatever it is, take your drop, talk the ball, and then, you know, quickly just hand it off after, you know, about three three beat pause. The running back is kind of shuffling side to side, side while looking like he's blocking, and then he's taking the ball and accelerating um, behind that center. And so we're literally just calling it like, like we would any other run play from the, from the past. And really this is an audible. Um, I would say if you get into a defense uh, in, onto the, on the ball and you see a four-man front and, uh, and it's really something where you really want to take advantage um, of a you know, five-man box, for sure, by rule, if it's a five-man box, we are telling these guys to, to run the ball. Um, if that's the case, that's the only time we saw a four-man front was when we saw these different looks. Uh, so always we're going to try to check into it. In our games, you know, it's so quiet. We can easily yell out to the to the kids as they approach the line of scrimmage, hey, 30-30. Um, so I would check to that. So, But, you know, you can do 31, 32. It's pretty simple um, way to teach it because there's not too much that goes into it. The other one I would say is these lead draws, which are pretty powerful as well. It's off tackle. but you can just check into a 33, which obviously would mean um, with the two out of the two back set, the fullback would go first. He would do his he would do his shuffle, 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 three seconds, get the ball, and then follow F through the hole. Okay, so we don't have film on that. We didn't really do it last year much, but those are the three ways. And the last thing we do have we do consider our quick screens, um, Larry and Roger, basically a sweep, but we also do jet sweep. There is no real maintenance to this. And so we don't really feel like we need to rep it like we do on our regular install. We can do this, we can practice this every every few days and, and be really good at it. But jet sweep is a staple, right? Um, we want this Y to come down and, and seal off this linebacker. We want the running back to cheat as much as possible over here and really seal off. We, we have to have this DN sealed. So he needs to help. And then if, it, if he's taken care of, he can move on to the, next, to the next guy. But we need to have this sealed, number one, and this sealed, number two. And then we are good to go. And then, obviously, you can get into open 
and run F jet. You can run Y jet. You can put him on the ball, take him off the ball and run R jet. I mean, really to your personnel, um, you can run what you want to run. Okay. And what you need to run. So easy to install, not much maintenance. Um, but yeah, so those are our three run game plays. Um, hopefully uh, you can start to kind of think about it. You probably already have your, your three run games that you would choose. Uh, usually we have to take care of an inside option, an outside option, and an off tackle option. That's what traditionally air raid teams kind of base those three plays off of. Again, we see so many five-man fronts. We really pound off tackle with these gap schemes um, and then we'll do draws if, if we get a chance, but uh, not much happens there. So anyway, continue to stay connected with us on all these social channels. Tune in for the next show when we get into pass pro our vertical sets and, and kind of how we do that. Okay. Thanks again, coaches. Let's continue to tell other coaches about this and especially in youth. So they know they can run the spread in the, in the youth football and middle school um, in particular. Okay. Thanks again. Talk to you soon.